Good afternoon. Thank you for being here this afternoon. My name is Abdubaki Bukhari, and I'm your host. Today, we are pleased to welcome the next chapter host and producer, Minister Catherine Warren. We call her Kitty Rose, yeah, to our beautiful studio at Mercy College. During our talk show, Minister Catherine will share with us her traveling experience in Senegal, West Africa, and finally, I will ask her perspectives on the multiple cultural continents of North America and Africa. So start off, Minister Catherine, <laughs> can you please introduce yourself to our viewer and yeah. tell me a little more about yourself? Well, thank you so yeah. much, Baki, for having me on your show. Yeah, I right. definitely think that Africa is awesome. Yeah. Today, TV show is, yeah. a, is a beautiful show to come on and share about my experience that I just recently had going to Senegal, West Africa. Yeah. So thank you so much for allowing me to come on your show today. You're really um, welcome. <laughs> as you said, I am Minister Kat. Um, I haven't really grown into the Catherine yet, yeah. maybe in two <laughs> years when I turn 50. Okay. But as of now, to be short, Minister Kat, or like you said, Kitty yeah. Rose okay. is what everyone calls me. Okay. And um, I, I started a few years ago as a TV producer. Mm -hmm. And with being a TV producer, I just got into film and, and other types of uh, mediums in the production or uh, television world. Yeah. Um, using my public access uh, relationship with BronxNet to yeah. start is how I started to maneuver into these other aspects of my life and recently becoming an a, a empty nester mm -hmm. is why my new show that I'm producing on BronxNet is yeah. called The Next Chapter okay. because okay. now I'm entering the next chapter of my life as an empty nester. Okay, that's very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, you tell me about the inspiration behind Next Chapter. Um, not knowing what to do now that I don't have kids in the house mm -hmm. and feeling that I wasn't alone in being clueless and understanding that if I'm not alone being clueless, that there could be so many other people that was clueless going through their next chapter if it so happened to be an empty nester type of syndrome, but just in general, these next chapters that we have in our lives when we turn 20s, when we yeah. go into our 30s, when we go into our 40s, how to actually navigate. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to continue to use my experience to help others figure out that these next chapters yeah. aren't things to be afraid of. Oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, that's very good. So uh, before COVID-19, you used to record your show in Bronsonet Studio. Unfortunately, because of uh, COVID-19 virus contamination, mm -hmm. uh, Bronsnet has closed <laughs> the, physical, <laughs> yeah, the physical studio mm -hmm. for two years. So during that period of time, uh, how did you adapt the situation? I didn't. I, I saw all the programs that was happening on BronxNet from everyone's virtual home and virtual yeah. studios, but I did not, I fought against the virtual world for a long time. Mm -hmm. I got depressed. I miss coming into the studio. Yeah. I miss being in the field, miss yeah. working with people. Yeah. So I didn't want to conform to the virtual world, but I did that for a whole year, mm -hmm. 2021. Yeah. And at the end of 2021, I said, Kat, yeah. You can't do that in <laughs> 2022. Yeah. You got to figure out something so and get back and either conform or yeah. figure out something mm -hmm. else because you can't spend another year yeah. not doing anything. And that's yeah. actually what I did. 2020, I, I went and stayed with family. Yeah. But 2021, no, I could so. not get mm -hmm. out of the funk of what was now becoming our new normal. Okay, I see. I see. So, a few months ago, you went to Senegal, West Africa. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip? I sure can, because that is the power of manifesta manifestation. Yeah. That's the power of God in my life. Because mm -hmm. when I said to myself at the end of the year, yeah. 
cat, you got to figure out what you're going to do. You mm -hmm. can't go into another year not doing anything. I said, okay, well, I want to travel. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm now, a, I, I'm, I'm coming into this healing part yeah. of my life as a healer wanting to help people. Yeah. So, you know, where do you want to do these things? I did some traveling last year, mm -hmm. but the gentleman that I'm now dating, he yeah. said, you know, well, if we're going to go anywhere mm -hmm. um, out, the con out the continent, yeah. the first place we need to go to is Africa. Okay. No uh, African American should yeah. go anywhere first mm -hmm. outside of the continent of yeah. the United States before going back home to Africa. Yeah. So I went to this meeting with the Harlem Tourism Board about mm -hmm. traveling and two months later mm -hmm. I was on the roster for a fam trip yeah. that Senegal uh, put together, the S Senegal Tourism Board put together to bring a delegation from yeah. the Harlem Tourism Board over to Senegal so that they can merge or build that yeah. bridge that gap yeah. mm -hmm. of Americans, Americans coming to yeah. Senegal yeah. in particular but the black, African continent yeah. mm -hmm. yes black and black descent and Caribbean yeah, descent because you know white folks travel all the time to Africa yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. but we don't but we'll go quick to Mexico Puerto Rico yeah. Jamaica yeah. we'll even go quick to yeah. Europe mm -hmm. before we go to Africa. Africa but I think because we think Africa is 14, 16, yeah. 20 hours away, yeah. mm -hmm. but we're now going to Dubai, yeah. but nobody's <laughs> going to Africa. Yeah. So I think that spiritually, um, because so many people follow me from that human yeah. perspective, mm -hmm. that I was able to break down the, the stereotypes of the stereotypes of Africa, yeah. let that be my first experience out the country, yeah. and build a relationship with folks that that, that look and act just like me, okay. that I might have not been able to do yeah. the way that I did I right have here. some pictures yes. of you. <laughs> so you're gonna comment each picture, okay? Okay. So what is it here? Well, this I wanted to show because you see, and mm -hmm. that's the opportunity I got. I got the opportunity to, to film and document this yeah. trip. Mm -hmm. And I did that because of my experience and certifications from BronxNet, yeah. <laughs> learning how to use the camera, yeah. mm -hmm. but now being able to transition the big cameras, the Canons, yeah. into like cell phone okay. um, devices now. So okay. that's me actually at one of the more Euro yeah. hotel. <laughs> but I <laughs> wanted nice to show place. that yeah. as a camera woman, you got, mm -hmm. you're not always standing. You know, yeah. you got to find your spot yeah. and just shoot. Okay, next yeah. picture, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every uh, tourist attraction want to go see that damn statue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was really showing it to show the statue and the steps mm -hmm. to get to the statue yeah. that everybody goes to um, the statue of the family, which is in direct correlation yeah. to the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. But this statue, I think, is the biggest one in yes. the world or some shit like that. Okay. Oh, I'm in, sorry. In, in, in I don't, can't curse on your for sure. Yes. No, <laughs> okay. no, 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 that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's the well, biggest in Senegal, but I think it's actually one yeah. of the yeah, biggest. biggest yeah. yeah, but it's directly facing mm -hmm. the Statue of Liberty. Okay. So I thought that that was dope because the Statue of Liberty is supposed to represent freedom, yeah. and this is all supposed to represent yeah. freedom, you know. but as a family. Okay. Next. Oh, who's this guy? We went to the tapestry, yeah. but you weren't allowed to photo video. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show that as a production person, you got to be versatile. Okay. So if you can't film, you can do audio. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yes. So you want to be the guy. <laughs> yes, I'm doing audio so that when I, because I'm going to make a film of my experience. Okay. So I wanted to maybe be able to use what he told to, talked about at the tapestry, mm -hmm. maybe as some voiceover. Uh, uh, okay. But I don't know. It's just why not have it, then not have it since I wasn't able to do any video. Okay. We got that stretched out a little bit, but yeah. that's me at Gory Island, at the top of the highest point uh -huh. of Gory Island, which was a very emotional, but beautiful, but inspiring day. Because oh, okay. that day that we went to Gory Island, not only did we go to Gory, I mean, they pulled out the stops for us. Mm -hmm. So we met with the mayor of Gory Island. Yeah. I sat with him and we took yeah. pictures with him. Gory, so yeah. that was like, we was, we was treated like royalty. It yeah. was beautiful, <laughs> but it was, but it was also sad, yeah. you know, because we actually got a chance. I got, I went yeah. into the slave castle. Okay. Yeah. So that was very emotional. Okay. That's very good. Next one. Mm -mm. Um, that is me at the um, the safari. 
Okay. But again, I'm just showing the versatility in filming. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I submitted that picture because I and I got to go to the griots. Yeah. Um, because I do consider myself a griot of our pain. Mm -hmm. So I got a chance to pray by the griot tree. Yeah. And the griot grave. So that was very emotional because I don't know really how I feel about. I don't talk to the dead mm -hmm. because the scriptures say that the dead is conscious of nothing. Yeah. But I know that we are connected through spirit and ancestral ancestral energy okay so I wanted to see if I can connect okay. to the uh, ancestors of my yeah. griots mm -hmm. um, and see if I could give some of that spirit yeah. to myself that's good next one yes the beach. The beach. <laughs> <laughs> the beach. Okay. Yo, that's complete ignorance. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because Africa, like every continent, is mm -hmm. surrounded by water. Yeah. But how I didn't connect that yeah. Africa has beaches. Yeah. So <laughs> Africa has beaches. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to the let them know, okay? Oh, Those my. <laughs> they have beaches and yeah. clean yeah. beaches. Okay. I mean, don't get it twisted. I went to go see mm -hmm. where the... um. The um the bird sanctuary, mm -hmm. so you ooh, you really got to see how um, litter yeah. loitering mm -hmm. really does infect the environment. Okay. People don't realize that that trash you throw on the floor, mm -hmm. if it doesn't get picked up, the wind just blows it, blows it, blows yeah. it, and it ends up in the ocean. Okay. And you don't realize the ocean is the is the globe, so mm -hmm. it's going to go on the on the lands or yeah. floors of everywhere. Yes. So to see the litter in in those areas, yeah. but generally, no, the beaches were beautiful. They yeah. weren't like Coney Island. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was beautiful. Look at the sand. Yeah. Look at the sand. Yeah. And I brought some sand home. Okay. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> wow. Glory Island. Glory. <laughs> this I, remind you yeah. of something if, else. To, to, that, imagine, mm -hmm. all I'm going to say is, imagine, imagine living in that. Yeah. For weeks and months. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Imagine living, and, and, and with no clothes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Throwing food yeah. on top of each other because yeah. they were what ten to thirty at a time in a cave, yeah. and it were different caves. There was caves for the men, caves for the children, and caves for the women, yeah. and caves for virgins. Okay. But it there was no light. Yeah. <laughs> That's the and then at yes. the end is the door of it's, no return. It, yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. But how how did you feel when you first saw this? I f I, I could feel yeah. them. Okay. I could, I could, I, whew, scared, yeah. confused, yeah. angry, yeah. but how I'm going to get out, what I yeah. could do, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, 30 of them in one cave, yeah. you know they was figuring out every mm -hmm. day how to yeah. get out, <laughs> yeah. because that's what we do as people. We, yes. we figure out how mm -hmm. we can escape, how yeah. we can maneuver, yeah. how we can take care of each other. Yes. Because also the other component to that is they had to take care of each other. Yes. So as sad as I was... I was still kind of encouraged because in order to get through that, yeah. you had to rely on your fellow brother. Okay. So we have a few pictures to share, but right now we're going to go to the PSA okay. when we come back. Okay. So we're going to continue. Cool. All right. <laughs> when I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. You know, a lot of people say, when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. But I beg a different. For her to see her father celebrate his graduation, it's the best feeling in the world. I can't lie and say it was easy. But sometimes you just have to stop everything and take it in. I looked at everything in a different light. I realized it started with me going back and getting my high school diploma. So we are back. Uh, he was commenting the pictures. Yes. So we're going to show the rest of the picture. Next one. 
Okay. Gloria Allen. Right. Uh, same feeling. There, right? Yeah, okay. same feeling. Right. Oh, that gentleman is actually the gentleman who hired me and took me, mm -hmm. Tony Rogers, who is yeah. the president of the Harlem Tourism Board. Okay. So shout out to Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Harlem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one. Hey. I wanted to show this picture because this was a part of my assignment as mm -hmm. a BronxNet producer. Okay. Because I am producing a special segment mm -hmm. or a film yeah. about my trip, BronxNet in their beauty and their relationship with yeah. allowed me to take some some equipment. Yeah. I don't know if I can tell that on air. <laughs> I don't know if the other producers yeah. want to know that. But I took that so yeah. that they can see that mm -hmm. look because because I didn't take all of my equipment, yeah. I still wanted to represent a professional look. Yeah. And that day I, I feel like I was able yeah, to do that. Nice, yeah. yeah. Who's this guy? Oh my goodness, Innovative House, Musa yeah. Tome. Mm -hmm. He runs this program in, in Africa that yeah. helps teach kids the STEM program. So mm -hmm. this was his building, this was his house yeah. that he um, took into and made into like a school. Yeah. But he also just recently did like an Echo Large yeah. um, that he's um, yeah, yeah, investing yeah, place, in. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so. A lot, of, a lot of Africans are investing more. Yeah, and I, like and look at him. He's, I think, yeah. like 42 years old, yeah. something, something mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Young, and he's a husband and a father. Yeah. So I was encouraged by, you know, him still doing his part yeah. and still having to, having to maintain yeah. a household. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't realize the sacrifices that come with that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just focus on our household because that's enough. Yeah. But to still do, you know, something for the community yeah. and invest in a beautiful, you can't really tell in that picture, yeah. but that the, that's the stairs to his yeah. bedroom. Mm -hmm. That. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. You gotta check them out. Innovative how go okay. online. Beautiful facility. And nice. I wanted to show ways that we can contribute and donate from here, the United okay. States, to our children in them. Africa. Okay. Next one. The beach. Uh, beach. You love the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I love the beach, but I just wanted to show the ignorance yeah. of yeah. there's beaches in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and how beautiful that yeah. was. Matter of fact, we I saw someone bathing his horse mm -hmm. in in the beach. Yeah. At the beach. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Next one. Gory yeah. Island. I got a chance to touch mm -hmm. the ground. Because okay. I wanted to feel the earth, the energy of my people. Yeah. Okay, that's the last picture. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, uh, as we all know, Senegal is a French-speaking country, right? <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> you, no, yeah, bonjour, yeah. bonsoir. You, <laughs> right. you, you learn few things yes. over there. So, uh, can you tell me about the language barrier? The language barrier is real talk because it's Wolof and French. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they have no need to yeah. really talk English if no mm -hmm. one's talking English because any English speaking people yeah. has tour guides. Mm -hmm. So, shout out to Baba Car. That was yeah. my tour guide, Baba Car Stank from Ravina Tours. He was beautiful. And we had a young sister um, named Sunny, Sunny yeah. Moore, mm -hmm. who's an American from Cali, but she now lives there. Yeah. So, between her and Baba Car, they were able to you know, help translate things so that we were able to communicate. Yeah. But I, 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 I was there for 10 days and still didn't learn how to say ça va bien, ça va bien correctly and bonjour. bonjour. <laughs> I was saying bonjour in the night when that yeah. was me in the morning. Bonjour, and morning. when people would say ça va, <laughs> I, ça va bien. Ça va, we supposed to say ça va bien. Ça va so bien. so yeah. I still didn't get it. <laughs> but I will tell you next time I'm going to yeah. go, mm -hmm. I will do. But you also got the Google thing on your yeah, phone yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, You can just go right. there. And Google then Translate. Write in, yes, Google Translate, <laughs> write in English, and then <laughs> listen. So yeah. I never knew that before the uh, trip. Okay. So that was introduced to me, but I didn't use that. So I used my what, tour what guide. What about the issue with the networking? Uh, like in the internet, it was perfect? It wasn't perfect. Of? It wasn't bad, but I wasn't mm -hmm. prepared. Uh, okay. I wasn't prepared. So it wasn't bad because I think that no Wi-Fi is good sometimes yeah. because it allows you to be in the moment. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The As a filmmaker, what was difficult is that yeah. I because I didn't take my equipment and yeah. my batteries, mm -hmm. I had to upload my footage every night yeah. off the cell phones. Yeah. And that became difficult because of the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And I didn't know that you guys don't have regular chargers. Yeah. Like there's another, yeah. there's a different kind of yeah, plug not, yeah, that yeah, goes yeah, into yeah, a kind of plug. Yeah, that's No one true. told me that. Yeah, so no. I didn't have an adapter. Yeah, <laughs> so. the, the, the thing is, the, the, the plug that uh, from Europe, mm -hmm. those ones are good, but I've never when seen you, it have, before. you have to buy the adapter. Exactly. It, so yeah. that was right. a problem. Yeah. But, you know, but at the end of the day, 
now knowing, mm -hmm. you know, and now, you know, when I talk to people, you know, going there now, yeah. it's, well, you know, make sure yeah, you make have sure it. Because it wasn't yeah. bad, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It and was, I think, to be honest with you, you need those moments. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you need those what, moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I was telling you that, and then you was talking good things about Africa, mm -hmm. right? So, as we all know, there are myths and stereotypes about Africa. And these were developed by early writers, historians, and Western pop cultures. This dominion continue to take place today and circulate how Africa is portrayed, mm -hmm. right? A few samples are the land is full of poverty, war, and disease. So <laughs> what do you think about that after visiting the continent? Well, one, poverty is everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of the world. Yeah. So the fact that to show the poor parts of Africa yeah. is another thing I think that the media, not the media, the powers that be, yeah. keeps us disconnected. Because mm -hmm. if we knew how beautiful the continent was, yeah. then we wouldn't have this, oh my God, yeah. I don't want to go there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think that myth right there first yeah. of the poverty should not be the, the main yeah. uh, landscape of mm -hmm. Africa yeah. because I went to a, Senegal is a, first of all, Senegal is a very rich country, yeah. and not only rich, but stylish. Yeah, yeah. These motherfuckers, yeah, you know what I'm saying? To be nice so roads, poor, yeah. they the most mm -hmm. stylish people out yeah. there, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And the same thing with like Nigeria, they yeah. very bougie, yeah. they're very like, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you can't be that poor mm -hmm. if you have and such high, high standards yeah. mm -hmm. about yourself, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Even in the fishing um, district, it looks poor, yeah. but they were the richest because yeah. they were self-sufficient. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's definitely the myth that everything is poor and yeah. that there's children in the street with flies. Yes, yeah. there is, mm -hmm. but where is it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the country itself is so beautiful, yeah. and I think it's done that way on purpose to yeah. keep us away. That's good. That's mm -hmm. very good. So I'm glad to hear that. So what do you think about the daily lives between the country of Africa and the USA? It's the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to work, everybody trying to live, yeah. everybody trying to do what's right by their families. Yeah. You know, my tour guy, I say, is now my twin. Mm -hmm. We were the same exact, we are the same exact age. Yeah. He's been doing his business for 16, 17 years. Yeah. I've been doing my business for 16, 17 years. Mm -hmm. He's a father, I'm yeah. a mother, yeah. he's a husband, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the same get up and go to work every day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Is yeah, put, food, put pants yeah, on yeah. one foot bring at a food, time. Bring the food at home. Yes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And because, you know, I am a Harlem, you know, activist. Little Senegal is one sixteenth okay. anyway. Yeah. So it was no different in the relationship because I see the hustle yeah. from my one sixteenth brothers yeah. that I saw there, and they see the hustle in me that they okay. saw there. Okay, so that's very good. So we are not gonna f end this interview without talking about the food, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me yes. a little bit about the experience with the food in Senegal. I'm gonna say two things about mm -hmm. the food. Yeah. So because mm -hmm. we were on a shishi tour, yeah. they tried to give us all of like the the the, the, the upscale yeah. food. Mm -hmm. We wanted jinga jam. What's it? What's that? Uh, yeah, jollof, jollof, jollof. Jollof. No, jollof. no. There's something else. There's another fish, not the yeah. jollof. That's mm -hmm. this chicken, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or lamb. But the food is amazing. But yeah. when we got the real food, mm -hmm. when we got the what, what I eat here in Harlem, yeah. then I was like, yes. Spicy, but I wanted to the spicy, oh. the the uh, the color in the meal. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I wanted to experience the tape, the round table component yeah. mm -hmm. where we all ate together. Yeah. I did not get a chance to experience yeah. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but yeah. the food was excellent. Like I ate three times a day. Okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's, that's how we ate in Africa. Man, in the morning, listen. Afternoon and, then, and evening. <laughs> and, then, and, <laughs> and evening was like 8 o'clock, yeah, 8.30. Yeah. I was like, this is too late. But I was, I was beyond happy with my meals. Um, and I, spicy, bring yeah. it. It was okay. awesome. Do you think investing in Africa is a good thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think investing in Africa is a good thing because I think all of us at one point in our lives should invest in our original home birthplaces. Okay. I think as Americans, and I don't really claim that, but as Americans, yes, invest in our home in the country that we live in. Yeah. But when we talk about generational wealth and opportunity, yeah. like you can buy an apartment building on the beach for $5,000 okay. and do an Airbnb there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. With the basketball team, with yeah. the soccer team, with mm -hmm. the new stadium, yeah. it's a it's in a, such a development stage yeah. that in the next three to five years, if we don't get in, we yeah. won't be able to get in yeah. because the white folks are investing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if the Chine white folks, Chinese, the Chinese, because yeah. the Chinese is who built the statue. Yeah. So if you have all of these other races mm -hmm. and cultures that's investing in a continent that's yeah. not theirs, yes. why wouldn't we as originators of yeah. this continent mm -hmm. have some type of investment that we could have yeah. in a country that is ours, yes. that's connected to us, mm -hmm. and that we can pass on to our children? That's because true. the education component doesn't stop with us. It yeah. doesn't stop with me and my peers. Yeah. I need my children yeah. to understand their heritage and where they come from. Yeah. And why wouldn't I want a house for them to go to when yeah. they're traveling? I strongly agree with you. Yes. So mm -hmm. uh, we are almost at the end of okay. Of our interview so also what do you think about the African diaspora in the USA and what advice do you have for the new colonies? If you're going to Dubai, go to Africa. Because <laughs> it's an eight-hour ride. It was yeah. a seven-hour ride from New York. Directly, direct flight from New York to Senegal was seven yeah. hours. Yeah. So I, if you're not going to Senegal, Senegal is like the new Ghana. Yeah. You know, you have to go um, to these countries that are developing around our culture, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the the diaspora and the Americans we're so similar, yeah. But because we have this disconnect from the other powers that be, mm -hmm. we don't unite the way we could yeah. because Americans don't like Africans and yeah. Africans don't no, like no, Americans. Don't, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when we go home and when we come together yeah. here in America, it's nothing but love. Yeah. When we came together in Africa, Africa, it was nothing but love. Yeah. But when we're not together, mm -hmm. there's strife. Yeah. So that myth and disconnect, Acting. we need to connect. Yeah. Because we are really all the same, and the love is uh, so pure. Uh, okay. what, what did your your country is yeah, known Stobo, for? Stobo, yeah. No, Taranga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the most gracious country yeah. in Africa. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the name. Yeah, that's the meaning of Taranga. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's your last word? Because we are the end of the show. You know, you see how it went fast. Yeah. <laughs> yes, as another producer, yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, the, your title is perfect, yeah, Awesome okay. Africa. Awesome Africa, You yeah. know, I really think that everyone at some point needs to experience that, okay. you know, it, and mm -hmm. experience it because not outside of the culture, yeah. Africa is adventure. Yeah. There's ATVs, mm -hmm. there's zip lining, yeah. everything that you can do in freaking Jamaica and the yeah. Virgin Islands, you can do in okay, Africa. So <laughs> unfortunately, we have reached uh, okay. the conclusion of today's show. Okay. So we'd like to thank uh, our guests for stopping thank by. Thank you. And of course, you, our viewers, so are tuning in. Care for the house, the kids, and our future. My Shiro's day is never done. So let's save a little more now so we can create the retirement we want. A free three-minute online chat can give us the personalized tips we need. Visit asiaretirement.org. The content you just watched was created by citizens just like you. An opportunity to use your independent voice and make your vision become a reality is a chance of a lifetime. So why not take this chance to BronxNet? With COVID-19 an ever-present reality, BronxNet gives our condolences to those we lost. Pay tributes to those who gave their lives to save another. Y agradecer a quienes realmente luchan en primera línea y enfrentan temores por nosotros. We thank you. Y nosotros también estamos trabajando juntos para frenar la propagación del virus al quedarnos en casa. With businesses closed, BronxNet is open for business in a different way. We are helping our producers to create content from their very home, and now you can too. With technology at our side, BronxNet is offering online workshops and virtual support to build your production skills. We, we are here, here to, to help, help you. Don't pass this chance to make your vision a reality.